Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Creators Connect series. My name is Miko, but you can call me that camera guy. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your love and support. I truly appreciate it. And if you are new here, please do consider subscribing if you like this video. So in today's episode of the show, we are joined by an artist, a literal pencil to paper artist. And her name is Carly Kermit. She specializes in charcoal and graphite drawings, which are absolutely out of this world. In the show, Carly and I talk about her shift from drawing portraiture to wildlife and why she has such a big passion for drawing big cats. Uh, we also talk about her favorite piece, which ironically isn't actually a big cat. So just sit back, relax, and let's connect with Carly. Alright, again, thank you so much, uh, Carly, for being here. I really do appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to sit down and chat with me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I've yeah, only nice. just recently seen your work. I think it's not more than a week that I've bumped into your Instagram page, but I've been absolutely astounded and moved by the amount of talent that you have, which is super, super cool. And I thought mm -hmm. it'd be fit for me to reach out to you and ask for you to be here and you're so graciously accepted, which I appreciate. Um, but my first question is uh, based on your Instagram itself and how long you've had it in relation to how long you've been doing art. Uh, when I was going through it, the first piece that's there is from somewhere in 2018. Uh, is that mm. when you started taking photos? I mean, um, drawing or it was before? Yeah, that? drawing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think 2018 is when I started taking it seriously. So before that, um, for about a few months before I started my Instagram, I was just posting on my personal uh, my personal Instagram mm -hmm. account. And then, yeah, so 2018 was when I decided to take it seriously and create an actual art account rather than just spamming all my family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think I've always loved drawing and, yeah, it's just, yeah, and always been in there. Before 2018... Um, what was going on and why was it something that you weren't taking quotes seriously? Um, I think it was something that um, I'd always loved, but I'd been doing film. I'd been studying film and television mm -hmm. for about um, two years and then working in television for about a year. And I just felt a bit kind of like I wasn't being really creatively challenged at all. Okay. So um, I don't know. I, I actually think it came down to a conversation that I had with an old friend over over the Christmas break and they were like oh how's your drawing going mm -hmm. like what, what are you up to with that and mm -hmm. I just was like oh my drawing like I fully forgot about it and I was like you know what I should start that again and that was kind of the start of everything and I just couldn't stop after that <laughs> okay so please walk me through uh, your decision to study film and television I, I went through your website and it mentioned that you studied film and television but even before mm -hmm. that in high school you discovered this passion and love you had for art. So why decide then yeah. to pursue film and television? Mm, yeah. Um, so when I was in high school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I had to do like a, a major in HSC and I, in my HSC. And uh, I did really well in drawing. And that's when I kind of picked up the style that I do today. Okay. And like through high school, I, I never really knew what I wanted to do. And I felt kind of like, oh, I don't know. And so I was going to go and study a Bachelor of Visual Arts because that was the only real thing that I felt good at. Okay. And before I left, I decided to um, instead take a gap year and I went um, traveling over Europe and mm, Italy with my nice. family. And yeah, that was like at the start of when iPhones were like, you could put little clips together on <laughs> iMovie. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, no one was doing it back then. Mm -hmm. But um, I, just everywhere I went, all through Italy, I was just taking these little like one or two second clips and I was like making these little edits yeah. and I just had so much fun. And um, my dad has always loved film and um, all of that stuff. And he said, hey, Carl's like, why don't you go and study film? Like, you're really good at it. You've got a good eye. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? No way. That's crazy. Yeah. And so like when we got back, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And you're, I was like, you know what? Why don't I just study it? Like, it'll be really fun. And I ended up doing um, two years at TAFE, which is like a really practical kind of learning 
the situation mm -hmm. rather than doing a lot of theory. Okay. So, yeah. And then two years into that, I got um, a job in television. So I was very lucky. But, yeah, that's kind of where it started. Okay, so do you... Um, first of all, did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy studying film and television? Did you enjoy being in mm. the production business? And mm. how then are you using what you learned then in what you're doing now? Or does it apply at all? Um, yeah, so did I enjoy it? Um, yes, I loved it. Especially in those early days at TAFE. I, I just remember like making a whole heap of short films with um, yeah. two of these other guys that I became really close with. And we were just creating these really cool and like quirky short films and edit, like entering them into short um, film competitions mm -hmm. and like festivals and stuff. Yeah. And we ended up winning a couple, which was really fun. And um, yeah, so that was really good. But I think... That, that was very different to what I started doing in television. So the short films were really creative and, yeah, super fun, whereas right. television is quite serious mm. and um, high pressure, very, like, um, full on, yeah. which is great. But, yeah, it was very different types of film. And I think towards the end, which was when I left last year, it just was getting too much and I felt like I wasn't really being challenged anymore. Mm. And... Like I did love working in the industry, but I just found myself constantly thinking about my drawings and wow. all of my art stuff. I just couldn't stop thinking about my art. Mm. So, um, yeah, it just made sense to leave. That's pretty yeah. cool. I think what would be really nice is if we could get links or to some of your short films, uh, if you can get them <laughs> and watch them. That would be nice. I think that would be really cool if we could do that. Um, Maybe. But I think it's, it's, it's sort of cool to hear the sort of background behind your art and your journey. And I think... I really do want to focus mm. now on the arts and the reason why we're here today. And you drew yeah. a lot of your drawings with charcoal and graphite. Um, mm -hmm. Have yeah. you ever explored any other, you know, tools? Or, uh, and why specifically graphite mm. and charcoal? Yeah, I think I think most artists start with sketching and drawing. That's like a foundational thing to being an artist. Yeah. And you usually start with sketching and move on to painting and oil painting and stuff. But mm -hmm. I started with sketching and I just never moved on. I just love the medium. I love the paper and just the way that it all works. And I really just understand it. Mm -hmm. So I just never really felt like I wanted to move on to painting. And I just love as well that it's just so, I just find that it's so much easier. You can just, it's so simple. Like you just put pencil to paper and it's there. Whereas painting, you have to get so many different things ready like I just I don't know I just never really yeah gravitated and and going into color drawings I never I'm not really that into color okay. like I I just love black and white I don't know why <laughs> it just I feel like it's super dramatic and mm -hmm. poetic and I just love the effect of it and yeah I just never really no <laughs> okay I might one day move in okay into um color so, but we'll see I've actually just been thinking that you you studied film and television but you didn't study art. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, no, I just okay, taught so, myself. So for someone yeah. who's experienced both, because this is a question or a topic that's often asked in debate or fun in the creative community is, is going to a formal, to a formal education system to acquire creative skills and talent worth it so you went through mm. film and television and you learned and experienced that but you didn't really go through art school and sort of taught yourself which yeah do you think that it's worth it going to an art school or a creative mm. school or you can learn and acquire skills and you know expertise through mm. just doing things by yourself I think that you can do it both ways. I definitely think that there is a lot of value in going to an art university or something like that. Okay. But um, I think the hard thing with art school is that they often put you into the artist that they want you to be. And mm. I remember when I was looking into going into uni, one of my family friends is also an artist and she did the same degree. And she said, just before you go, just let's catch up for a coffee and let's talk about it because it can be really confronting going mm. to art school because wow. they often try and put a lot of political things into your head and they try and tell you what to create. And especially with stuff that I do, that often isn't considered um, really like what the art world does, okay. you know. 
like it doesn't say a huge message about like whatever you know like it's not a political statement and so it can be really hard when you open yourself up to art school because they try and shift you into what they want and also they don't really teach you technical skills of painting and drawing like I think that they teach you the basics but they're not going to teach you this kind of stuff I think if you want to be a photorealistic artist I think that's something you need to teach yourself because I don't think that they really cover that kind of stuff Hmm. in a university course but I know I didn't really find the need because um, I've grown up with art around me my whole life Mm. and my mum was an art teacher at high school and stuff so I just felt like I kind of had the basis of what I needed to do it myself so yeah. your dad was into film and your mom was an art teacher and kind of runs yeah the, kind of runs in the family which is super cool um to have yeah. uh, your parents sort of uh, be people you can look up to and learn from your dad which is mm. super nice it's a very um, creative household yeah. yeah but i realized as well on your, on your instagram page that you started off doing photo realistic portraitures uh, mm-hmm. and then you sort of shifted you stopped a little bit posting that stuff and went into wildlife. Why mm. that shift? What inspired it? Um, it was a few reasons. I I love portraiture. I still love it. They're amazing. They're actually I think. Really amazing. <laughs> thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, I've always been like really interested in the human face, and I just think it's so interesting. Um, but I think a lot of it came down to. Um, putting it in your home a lot of the comments that I was receiving when I was doing those artworks was oh yeah like it's amazing but I would never put it in my house because I don't know who they are and that was a really hard comment for me to like take on Mm. because I just was like oh well I would put it in my home it's it's kind of like an art statement Mm. so I think I kind of moved away from it for that reason to start with and then as soon as I started doing my first lions and all of those type of ones, I just fell in love with the texture of the fur and the patterns of, especially like the Jaguar pattern. I just fell in love with it and I just was really challenged by it. It's Mm. fur is incredibly difficult and I'm still having a lot of trouble trying to figure it out. But yeah, I think it's just been a real challenge and I think that's why I've stuck with it for so long. Mm. Yeah, pretty much that's why. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty rough and intense um when you look at the vulnerability that creators have i mean when we mm. make art when we create content we are really putting ourselves out there and it's not mm. pleasant when you know people look at that and you know don't take it for what it is mm. but i think yeah that's it's really hard that's sort of part of the journey um when you go into it yeah. um i think we need to mentally mm. prepare ourselves for that kind of heat not everyone who we present our yeah. work to is going to love it so i think experiencing yeah. that kind of builds us uh, and builds our character i guess a little bit of resilience yeah. and perseverance 100%. gets us through i'm sorry you had to go through that um but i think at the same time <laughs> there's a silver lining because wow mm. the wildlife is mm. is definitely yeah. something special um definitely i, I don't know if uh, the big cats is all that you do or you draw other stuff but what I see the most is big cats the lions mm. the jaguars why big cats why so much love mm. for what's the story behind that or it's just I think yeah I think everything I draw has a, an underlying feeling okay. and emotion and I really I yeah whenever I draw something it has to have a real connection with my spirit and mm. I think the the cats and the wild animals they just have this really amazing feeling of um oh, I don't know how to explain it. it's just like an attitude and yeah even looking at them yeah. when they're finished oh I don't know it's, 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 it's different <laughs> yeah it's just like I'm a really big believer in like if you want something in life like you have to go for it and even if you don't have the skills at the time you know uh-huh. like you can figure it out and it just like I just find that the animals and even my portraiture just has this attitude of like the go-getter and like, you know, you, you can pursue what you want and you can do it if you put your mind to it. And like, yeah, I just love the the attitude and the the feeling behind, yeah, the cats. And I just feel like they have this really um, powerful presence, especially in a home. And it just gives you that really, that real wow factor. And it kind of takes your breath away, especially even when you just see the photo of the big cat. I just find that, yeah, it just, 
it makes you go, oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. I, Especially that I don't see them here. Like in Australia, we don't have big cats here. So uh, it's really amazing for me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Have you ever seen a big cat live? No, I haven't. I've seen a lot of, I've watched a lot of documentaries and a lot of David Attenborough um, footage, mm -hmm. which I just, it's insane how big they are. Like even just in comparison to a car, they're huge. Mm -hmm. But I would love to. I need to make some time and like go to a zoo or something. Yeah, but yeah, I would love that, to go traveling. That would be and nice. You should definitely yeah. put that on the bucket list. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. But yeah, um, just a little bit of a shift from your main creativity mm -hmm. point is you have this greeting card initiative that, you, that you're doing where people can buy greeting cards and the money is donated. Please tell us a little bit more about that because I absolutely fell in love with the idea. When did it start? Oh, what yeah. inspired it? What's really going on there? Oh, yeah. So the the greeting cards with the artworks on the front, yes. with the Jaguar yes. and stuff. Oh, okay. Those ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was contacted. I work with um, a marketing team to help them help me do my marketing in regards to all of my art stuff. Mm -hmm. But they work with a company called Rafiki and they... Uh, help to rescue young women out of human trafficking in Kenya, which I just thought was like so amazing. And they asked mm. me if I wanted to be a part of um, an auction. And I was like, yes, 100%. So I gave them an artwork wow. and they sold it. And yeah, so that was a really good feeling. And then after that, they kind of said, would you like to, um, would you like to collaborate on some like cards? And so it'll be like all the profits will go towards helping these young women and building a safe house and, I just felt sure. so called to to do something meaningful and I still want to do more mm. more things like that but I just I just have this yeah overall feeling especially in life in general that we we're, we're here to bless others and I just mm. felt really called to do something more with my art so yeah I just was really excited about the opportunity of yeah blessing others and helping wherever I can um but yeah so yeah, that's, that's really amazing. Um, I, I saw it and I was like, I definitely need to know more. And I fell in love with the, uh, your gesture. And, and then that way, it's super nice to hear the story as well, to see that um, art can work and help people in so many different ways, which mm. is, which is yeah. absolutely beautiful to see. Um, but that also leads into my next question. And you almost talked about it. You're like, it's what I want to do. I want to do more. And mm. I think the question is like, what's next or what more do you want to do with the brand called mm. Renee? Um, either personally or like, I don't know, how big do your dreams fly? Oh man, they're big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, last year when I first left my job um, in television, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make mm. something out of myself. And, you know, when I left um, Channel 9, they were kind of like, a lot of people were like, why are you leaving such a good job? Yeah. And people didn't get it. So I felt this really big pressure to like prove myself in a way. And I wow. think that was really, um, I think that mindset was really harmful to my journey as an artist because wow. there were so many times when I left in the months after I was just burning myself out, like working seven days a mm. week I wasn't seeing any friends I didn't have many connections and I just was in this like fight or flight like mentality and nothing was really working for me and I wasn't selling anything and you know no doors were opening and I just had the complete wrong mindset about it and so mm. I think um in about November Oct October November last year I just had to let it all go and um now when I think about the future I just kind of I just, I, I don't really know. I don't have any plans. I just am okay. focused on becoming the best artist that I can possibly be and making sure that I'm living an outwardly focused life and making sure that my work speaks to people and it's connecting mm -hmm. people together. And mm -hmm. I think if I've got that mentality, like opportunities will just come up and yeah, I'm not really fussed about where I'm going. I'm just making sure that my, my vision and my, my goals as a person are aligned and mm. yeah so I'm not really I don't know where it's gonna <laughs> where it's gonna go but I do want to be um I'm really thinking about the longevity of being an artist for a long period of time so mm, hopefully yeah, I'm doing yeah. this for years to come <laughs> we hope we hope so too for sure we definitely hope so mm. um but you, you mentioned how when you started you were like 
really working seven days a week and mm. there's no time for friends and really exerting yourself. But I think obviously with time, you learn to strike a balance between your art and mm-hmm. your personal life. Yeah. And as someone who is, you know, an entrepreneur and you're working for yourself, it's hard to find, to separate the two because you wake up in your home, that's where you kind of work, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what core values did you pick up in terms of being able to find a balance and striking a balance between uh, work and personal life, separating mm. the two and giving each the time they both deserve? Yeah, I think um, I think rest is just as important as hustling and working hard. Yeah. Like, I think there's a time and a place for work and then there's also a time and a place for resting and recharging. And I think if you're not mm. doing it properly, if you're not recharging, then your art is going to come from a place of um, of emptiness. You're not going to have yeah. the full amount of energy to give it what it needs. And so at the end of the day, your art is suffering because you're not showing up 100%. So I think in terms of balance, I always try to like I might work from about 8 or 9 a.m until some days until like 6 and then do all my social media stuff until about 10 Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's not too bad at the moment but I just try and do that Monday to Friday and maybe do a bit of drawing on Saturday and Sundays but I'm always trying to make sure that I'm catching up with my friends and talking about stuff I think through mm-hmm. that time, I was just kind of bottling everything up and just being like, no, I've got this. I can do it. Just trying to be yeah. strong. But <laughs> you you have friends for a reason and you need mm-hmm. to be connecting with those people. So I think just, yeah, just relaxing into it and not putting so much pressure on yourself to be anything. Yeah, it's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you, you mentioned a very good thing. Rest is absolutely important. I, I, mm-hmm. I went through a similar time last year. and I think the idea was, to push out as much content as possible. I think for me, I was seeing how much everybody else had done. And I was like, I need to be where that person yeah. is. They're releasing like three <laughs> videos a day. I need to be releasing three videos a day. But yeah. I mean, you're kind of running your own race. You're running it's, your own journey. That's right. And I did that Very dangerous. Yeah. yeah. It's very dangerous to mm. compare, you know, my three-month journey with someone's five-year journey. Yeah. Like, they've that's been in exactly. the game for, for quite a bit. So... I yeah. had to learn to um, just calm myself, humble myself as well, mm. but also take my time. Take my time and really do rest when rest is needed because that disrupts yeah. the whole process. And it's, it's the art that's made in that time is not, yeah. not the best. Um, but what, what has been your favorite art piece? And why? Oh, I'll get it out. I don't, I don't know if I can explain it. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you can. Please, uh, it's this one. It's um this girl. It's not a, a big cat at all. It's a girl with like a veil over her head. <laughs> I had and a feeling it was not going to be wildlife. I don't yeah, know. really? I just had a yeah. feeling. <laughs> just had no. A feeling. <laughs> I mean, I do like a lot of them, but I don't really like, to be honest, it, it's really hard to pick a favorite because they all could be better <laughs> in my eyes. Mm-hmm. And they're never really yeah. finished. But um, I think that one, as soon as I saw the reference photo, it just... I don't know, it just hit something really personal for me and it just um, expressed all of these things that were inside of me that I couldn't explain. So Mm. I drew that one at the start of last year while I was in Norway and I just, it was the first artwork of the year and I just felt like it really expressed these internal feelings of, um, I guess it's it's kind of like um, talks about maybe like a sense of blindness that we have to ourselves Mm. and we have this like veil over ourselves and we don't let people in and you know who are we on our true self and who are we when we lift away the veil and yeah we don't have that facade anymore and um, I just felt like it was a piece that spoke to so many people and you know I'm always interested in getting to know people at their true self and not Mm -hmm. who they are on the outside so um, yeah I just I just love it I can't yeah, I can't pick it's, anything else. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, I wish I could look at it longer, uh, <laughs> but it's really nice. And I, I love the story behind it as well. It's, mm. it's, it's like really, Thank you. really beautiful. Um, but speaking about, you know, art pieces and how they make you move and when you look at them and you look at the reference photo and things like that, but what's sort of the process that you go through when you decide what to mm. do? Where does it start? And mm. How does it sort of roll out? And, and 
Um, yeah, that's a really hard process. I I find it really hard to choose one because often the photo will turn out to look really different as a drawing. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, people often ask me to draw these types of photos and I just know that it won't translate into a drawing. So um, lately my process has been to think about a few drawings as a whole because at, for mm-hmm. a time I was just drawing one at a time and each drawing, I, it didn't really fit together as a collection. It was uh, these drawings, they were kind of standalone pieces. And I now, like, when I think about my art, I always try and think about um yeah the collection as a whole and especially if I'm going to do an exhibition I always try and think about it as um yeah as a whole collection and making them Mm -hmm. work together so um for all of my big cats I've been using an amazing photographer um his name is David Whelan and so I got Mm -hmm. his permission to use all of his photos and I only draw from his photos now so yeah he's amazing and he lets artists um draw his work without asking anything so yeah he's amazing and um feel very blessed to yeah for him to let everyone use them how amazing is he Mm. um but yeah it's always it always comes down when I choose the drawings it always comes down to a feeling that I have towards the the photo first and if it has that real um yeah that real powerful feeling underneath and then you choose that and you draw it yeah yeah that's that's really nice and yeah i mean we need to be doing things that make us feel different Um, Mm. i know for a fact that it's very easy to get caught up in what the world wants because living a very digital world where everyone has sort of access to you so yes um, (laughs) i know as a content creator it's easy to shift from what makes you happy and what you're comfortable with to start creating content for the sake of the people um, so you, you mentioned that sometimes people ask you to draw stuff and you're mm. like, that really won't turn out the way it is. Yeah. Have you ever had to say no to a particular job because mm. you don't think that it's going to come out the way? Yeah, you know, <laughs> a lot, it. actually. I like, especially recently, I have had so many requests for commissions and all of that kind of stuff. And it's been really hard because obviously I do want more work and I want to put my work out there and to be drawing as much as I can. And yeah. I think it's been really hard to decide what kind of artist I'm going to be because in doing these huge portraits, I'm working towards having a collection of drawings that I'm going to release as an exhibition and mm-hmm. I'm going to have like an opening night and it's going to be great. I'm going to get them all framed. Wow. And yeah, so wow, I'm, that's wow, wow. my kind of goal that I'm working towards at the moment. And mm. um yeah so it's going to be quite expensive and it's going to be like the framing is going to be very expensive but um I think in terms of like yeah my my goals I'm trying to create a collection that I can also get prints made out of and so I can sell 25 prints of each original drawing and then try and sell the original drawing as well so when people ask me to do a commission it's really hard because any time that I spend on a commission is um, taking away from this time that I'm trying to create this collection so wow. although a commission may may bring in a certain amount of money in the short term it actually takes away from the long-term goal of um, having prints and stuff because I can't make prints mm. out of a commission obviously but um, mm. yeah so at the moment it's been really hard to turn away work constantly and say I'm sorry mm. I can't do it um, but I think in the long term as an artist, I've really wanted to create, yeah, a collection that will be remembered. And also when you do commissions, it, it feels quite disjointed. Um, when you Mm. go to someone's page, there's some artists that do it really well, but when I've done commissions in the past, it's, it often feels like it, each work is kind of, yeah, the same kind of thing I was talking about before. They stand alone and they don't work together as, Mm. as a whole feeling. Yeah. That you have. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty hard, like you said, to have to say no to certain mm. type of work. But um, I love and respect that you have this goal and this plan for yourself and you are sticking to it no matter what. I think, like I said before, it's very easy to drift as an artist, as mm. a creative. Yeah, and totally. fall into the needs of the people and sort of put yourself and your needs aside. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I respect your decisions to, to do that. And I think it's something a lot of people can learn from you as well. Which is really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, we see your work on YouTube. We see your work on Instagram. And we only see the final thing. We mm. see the beauty of it all. And, you know, it makes people smile and people get hyped and whatnot. But what goes on behind the scenes that we don't get to see? <laughs> a real a real struggle like oh what so happens, many things <laughs> what are the really nasty things that happen and you're like oh you don't get to see you um don't get to experience. when yeah well the first thing that came to mind when i was thinking about that was probably um halfway through last year when i was drawing um one of my biggest pieces it's a tiger and it was a super hard piece it was just so challenging and halfway through i just burnt out and I I just almost gave up completely and I remember just sitting in the kitchen just crying and just thinking yeah. I'm not getting uh. anywhere like I just and my I'd been going so hard for so long and um mm. just working myself to oblivion it was just ridiculous and I just was sitting in the kitchen and I just remember looking out into the garden and just thinking I don't know if this is for me. Like, I don't know how much longer I can do this. Yeah, I think too. I had about like 4,000 followers at the time. And I just felt like it had been like that for a really long time. My engagement was going down. Like I was losing followers. I just, sure. I just, it felt like everything was falling apart. And mm. oh my gosh, my family was there for me. So that was amazing. And I'm so blessed that they were there to help me through it. And they were like, no, like just take, take the day off. Like you need to rest now you just need to rest is <laughs> recover and mm. um that was that day I just remember so clearly in my mind and I just fully thought I'm gonna delete my Instagram I'm gonna delete everything I it was so <laughs> dramatic I was like <laughs> I Thank don't really you. talk about this often but that day was um a really pivotal moment for me and I just felt like wow. so defeated and then the very next day I ended up selling one of my original artworks and all of these things. So I just fully hit rock bottom. And, but then the very next day, it just felt like all of these things were happening when I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't give up now. Like, um, mm -hmm. and I just felt like it was such a blessing that I started selling the very next day because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a very low time and yeah. But apart from that, there has just like with every drawing that I do, there is a moment where I'm like, I don't know if I can pull this off. Like it's mm. not working or the paper is falling apart or <laughs> I can't rub it out anymore. It just, there is mm. those moments. And I try to put that stuff out there as much as I can, because I know that there are so many young um, artists following me and they would have those moments too. And it's just really important to talk about it and just yeah. to keep going. And if it's not working, just put it aside and, start a new one and just keep going but um yeah it can be really hard yeah it, it definitely is and i just wish that more of these stories could come up and mm, people could yeah. learn from them mm. um because like you say there's a lot of young artists a lot of people choosing or deciding to go into this thing and they probably are going through the same thing and thinking you know what i can't um, look at where Carly is like what the heck yeah but then when you hear Carly's story you're like she just didn't start with 40,000 no, I didn't followers right I mean so being able to relate to uh, a public figure like yourself just as a normal human being is so nice it's so nice for people to be able to hear no 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 she, she just started yeah. just the way you are she yeah. cried as well yeah but it's 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 such a, a beautiful story and I think Things kind of need to get hard before they get pretty. Yeah, again. that's right. I, um, I think because it builds us up and tests our character, it really mm. does test our character. And if you can live through that phase, then this is definitely what you need to be doing. You yeah, know? so totally. it's beautiful that you went through that. I mean, I'm sorry, it's, it's not a pleasant <laughs> thing to go through, but looking at mm. where it has brought you and mm -hmm. the kind of character that you have now and resilience you have now, um, I think you kind of look at it and be grateful. Yeah, I am. One hundred percent. Yeah, 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 which is really nice. Um, but yeah, last year you're talking about being just at four thousand followers, mm. and then early twenty twenty one, it's forty thousand plus yeah. followers, <laughs> and crazy. engagement is just skyrocketing. How does that make you feel? 
oh my gosh it scares me to be honest oh like I yeah I've always hoped that more people would be able to see my art but when Mm. it actually happened I um freaked out a little bit to be honest (laughs) I I were you ready (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I just, I didn't know what it would feel like. And hmm. yeah, I think to, like I'm an introvert through and through and I spend a lot of time by myself and I love really? it. Really? Yeah, I'm fully an introvert, but I lo- I think I'm half half to be honest. Like I really <laughs> love like people and, you know, seeing people and stuff, but I'm, I don't know, I keep a lot to myself at times. Hmm. And so when I was watching my stories and there was just so many people watching and I had a moment and I was like, I don't know if I want this life. This is a lot. <laughs> and I, yeah. I just um, released a new YouTube video and it was very personal and I just felt very scared that, you know, potentially a lot of people could be seeing that. So <laughs> I Is that out. the one where you go through the process of throwing one of the pieces? Yeah, yeah. That was, that was a really good video. That was Thank a, you. I could see the skill from production. I was like, okay, oh. I was watching <laughs> it. It's really nice. I enjoyed it. Thanks. Yeah, but um, yeah, it feels good. I think I'm getting, yeah, I, I just love that my inbox is filled with so many beautiful messages and people just... Yeah writing to me just to tell me that they love my work and that um, Mm -hmm. I've inspired them to pick up the pencil, which is always my favorite messages when people say, I haven't drawn in years and I just saw your video and I'm, I'm going to pick up the pencils again. And I just love those messages. And yeah, it just makes me feel so great that um, my, what I'm doing is meaningful to people. And yeah, that's the best thing about it. Yeah. I think that's every creative dream is to leave an impact. um, yeah to be able to impact people's lives and, you know inspire them to continue mm. to create i think it's a beautiful thing and yeah i'm super proud of you and i only hope that you can continue to grow but that you are also ready for that kind of growth <laughs> and the attention that comes mm. with it now because yeah i can only see you going up from here no mm. doubt my thank mind. you um, <laughs> but yeah it's it's been such a pleasure such an honor to be able to sit down with you mm. uh, thank you so much for answering your questions and I think I've definitely learned a lot from you and I hope people can, can do that as well. I just have one more question before mm. we close off and that's what's your favorite part about all of this, about being in a creative space? What's the one thing um, that um, always keeps you going? I think, I don't know, I think the whole thing, like I just, I was in my studio the other day just And I just had a really average day and I just remember sitting there thinking, I just love what I'm doing. I just remember feeling this huge sense of happiness. Like I wasn't doing anything massive. I think I was packing some prints and writing the little thank you to whoever had bought it. And I just felt this huge moment of like, I just love what I'm doing. And it just, yeah, I think that is the best part, the whole lifestyle and being able to connect with people and yeah, do what I love. And I just feel like, um, this is my purpose and that I have been yeah like pursuing my purpose in life and that is just the best feeling in the world so yeah I think that's probably the best part <laughs> yeah I think uh, I've, I've come across way too many people uh, unfortunately who aren't happy doing what they're doing mm. Shame. It's, yeah it's not it's not uh, pleasant to go through life that way so mm. being able to find something and be in a space where it doesn't feel like work and you don't yeah. feel like overly stressed out is is truly a blessing um mm. so uh, i'm not surprised that 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 is your answer just the whole thing you just can't take one thing out. i just, just the fact no, that i just love the whole thing <laughs> the whole thing in itself is actually amazing yeah. which is a beautiful thing but yeah thank you so much uh mm. for the conversation i, I really yeah. do uh, appreciate it um and i can only hope that we can stay in touch and can't mm. wait to see you grow and, and do more. I'm super excited for the exhibition. I would definitely be oh, yeah, that. me too. Uh, and and that mm. process as well. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for the amazing questions. That was a really great combo. I loved it. <laughs> it is completely my pleasure.